Okay, everybody, we're going to start tonight's event. I am Robin Schwartz. I am the program and grant director of the Community Arts Partnership of Tompkins County. And the Spring Rights Literary Festival is one of many of our events. And I will put our website, which is artspartner.org, into the chat. And see how I'm getting blurry right now? It happens sometimes. That's another fun thing that I can't figure out. Um, I'm just going to keep talking blurry, and then I unplug and replug. Um, we also have six grant programs at the Community Arts Partnership for Tompkins County artists and arts organizations and area not-for-profits. And we're about to launch our Creative Recovery Fund, which is due on June 22nd. So if you're interested in getting a grant, please check out our website. I will also put the springrights.org link in the chat. There are over 20 more events, amazing events, and I hope you can come to many of them. Oh my God, I'm getting more and more blurry. All right, I'm gonna unplug myself and I'm just gonna keep talking and we'll plug back in. So every event so far has been really inspiring and touching. And I know the term Zoom fatigue is out there, but I love the fact that we can get together so easily without fear of infection. And the people from all over the world, you know, can, can, can be here. And by the way, if you are from somewhere other than Ithaca, a Tompkins County, write where you're from in the chat, because that's always really fun to see. For those of you who can't see me, it's because I'm having trouble. So next, uh, I wanna just really quickly mention that there are four, five events tomorrow. And then after that, there's a whole bunch of workshops and performances. Tomorrow is Inside Black Feminist Alchemy on Zoom with Dr. Nia Nunn. There's a group reading called Liminal. That's at Buffalo Street Books. After that, there's a reading Finger Lakes Memoir Anthology also at Buffalo Street Books. That one starts at 4.30. And in between, there's an event called Youth Rights, Kids Erasing the Words, which is live at the Tompkins County Public Library. It is an event with teenagers. There's an event that was live and is now Zoom called Digging Deep Within to Find My Neighbor. That is on Zoom tomorrow night at 6.30. I'd love you to take a look at that. Um, I think because it was live and then it became Zoom, we only have about 14 people registered for it and it's gonna be amazing. So take a look at tomorrow's events at springrights.org. I'm also gonna include a donation link in the chat. All of the Spring Rights events are free. So like any other good not-for-profit, we must continually ask for donations. Even $10 is great. I always say more is also great. Um, and uh, so thank you if you can donate donate to the community's partnership because we're really quite a wonderful organization and we do quite a bit for the arts in Tompkins County. Um, please stay on mute throughout the event. Please use the chat heavily for questions and comments. It's the way we see engagement in a Zoom event like this one. So Zoom chatting is very, very welcome. Um, the bathrooms are down the hall. I'm going to send everyone who attended a Spring Rights event a really short multiple choice Google survey in about a month. If you could fill it out, that would be amazing because we really, really need to know how you heard about the event. It's possible we're spending money doing advertising in places where no one is noticing it. And it's kind of crucial that we know where you hear about things. I'm starting to think it's almost entirely word of mouth, actually. I'd like to thank our wonderful Spring Right sponsors, Ithaca College, Wegmans, M&T Bank, CFCU Community Credit Union, the Odyssey Bookstore, and the Ithaca Marriott. We receive grant funding from New York State Council on the Arts, Poets and Writers, and Tompkins County Tourism. Our media sponsors are Ithaca Voice, WITH Radio, and WSKG. We will be recording this event. And I am going to now turn the mic over to, who am I turning the mic over to, by the way? Is it Saviana? Yvonne. To Yvonne. So I'm gonna turn the mic over to Yvonne and the artists will introduce themselves. And, um, and I will let you explain what you're doing tonight and, and, that, and, and mention or that there's gonna be a question and answer afterwards. Thank you, Yvonne. 
Thank you. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay, thanks so much. I appreciate all of you coming. Um, and oh, I always get a little nervous. Um, I'm going to read four short pieces that I wrote. And the first one is called Mask. I'm still wearing my mask. I put on my mask. I hate my mask. I love my mask. Like all of us, like some of us, I'm of two minds. My mask constricts me, makes me lonely. I can't breathe, I can't talk, I can't hear. My glasses fog up. I can't connect, gets in my way. I pull it up, I pull it down. I never quite know when to wear it. It's so confusing and irritating. It takes over and fills me with fear. It feels hopeless, never ending, a different world, a different life. On the other hand, I love my mask. It comforts me, it protects me. It's an N95. I look like a duck. I don't care. I feel naked without it, like I'm missing something. Phone, keys, money, mask. Without it, I'm exposed, vulnerable, weak. With it, I'm strong, defiant, safe, incognito. Nobody knows me. I'm like Batman flying around, my secret identity. Nobody recognizes me. I don't recognize them. They don't know if I'm smiling or scowling. I like that. Keep them guessing. Keep them in the dark. I'm in my own cocoon. No one can approach me. I can't smell the fumes of the SUVs when I'm wearing my mask. I can't smell the urine polluted streets of New York City when I'm wearing my mask. I'm hidden in hiding, everything is hidden. I'm alone in my mask. I'm a superhero in my mask, I'm invisible. I'm nothing without my mask. I won't get sick, I won't get sick, I won't get sick. I can't talk, can't hear, can't see, just leave me alone when I'm wearing my mask. Give me my, my space when I'm wearing my mask. What I'm trying to say is, and don't get me wrong, we better get used to it, wearing our masks or not. The second one is a short uh, kind of rap thing called Save Our Souls. I'm uninspired because I'm so tired. Earlier today, I was really wired. I couldn't sleep, my brain on fire. Am I delirious? Am I a liar? Am I just hungry? What do I require? Fire, fire, no false alarm. We have to do better. Use all your gall and charm. We have to save democracy or nothing will work out. Running in circles, scream and shout. Fire, fire, no false alarm, fighting in the streets or retreat on the farm. We have to do better, whatever the weather, our essential rights are at stake. It's like an earthquake. I'm scratching off my skin for fear we just can't win against all who are so vicious, conspiracy superstitious. And still we have to try, don't even ask me why. Do I look hungry? For peace of mind, I'm searching everywhere. And what do I find? Fire, fire, no false alarm. How can we live in peace and not do any harm? We're here trying to make art with deep connections in our heart. Sometimes we retreat that we cannot miss a beat. This is no false alarm, fire, fire. I'm the town crier. Now I'm on a roll, save our body, save our soul, save our body, save our soul. The third one I wrote a couple of years ago and um, still seems relevant today. It's called Spa. I've been to health spa retreats, yoga retreats, raw foods, juice fast, wheatgrass retreats. Costa Rican retreats, Propala, Omega, Foundation of Light, Light on the Hill, New Age, Buddhist, Zen, Jewish, anything I can to get healthy, calm, balanced, 
and quiet, to detox, to purge, to reset, to clean out, to be with like minds, to live longer, to have longevity, to live forever, forever and ever. I've been acupunctured, chiropractic, massaged and soothed. I've been physician assisted, nursed and doctored too. I've been hot stoned and loofed all over, it's true. I've been PT'd, OT'd, LSD'd and shroomed. I've been tea treed and reiki'd. I've been elderberried too. Stinging nettle, probiotic and antibiotic too. I've been psychic'd and tarot'd and ruined and astrologically groomed. I've been laughing yoga, ecstatic dancing, and singing the blues. I've been wailing and keening and traveling around. I've been looking for answers and heard not a sound. I've been a wandering Jew and I've been homeward bound. I've been climbing mountains, got lost and been found. I've tried everything I could to get really healthy while the planet is dying and going to hell or to heaven with the rapture, flying up to God or diving straight down. Text me and I'll meet you there. But first, clean me out, clean me out, make me a servant of your will. Make me pure and clean and healthy and thin before I die in a blaze of fire or a flood or choke on the poison air or drink the toxic water. Clean me out, clean me out, make me pure as the snow, as we struggle on, as we carry on, as we stroll in the woods and beware of ticks, as we swim in the chlorinated pool of life, as we bungee jump our way through, as we walk each other home, there's nothing else to do. And the last one, thank you for that. The last one is called prayer. I forgot how to pray. I forgot who to pray to. Who do I pray to? The willow tree in Stuart Park, whose majesty overwhelms me. Oh, willow tree, your elegance as you lean toward the endless lake calls to me as I pass you by. You are so strong and delicate and grounded into the earth, deeply feeding all other trees, watching over us with abiding calm and great presence, no matter what is happening in this harsh world. Please be my guide, my role model, my teacher. Oh tree, I pray to you ceaselessly when I remember how, as birds of praise fly happily around you singing their sweet, sad songs. Yes, when I remember how to pray, I pray to my guardian angels, my loved ones who have died and gone to, I don't know, heaven or the cosmos floating around, flying wherever you are. My guardian angels, I feel you more than I can say. Thank you for your gentle protection, for keeping the plane up in the air when I fly, for catching me when I trip over my own feet before I fall down. My gratitude is immeasurable, though I may not always acknowledge it. I feel your love like rose petal. May I be worthy and kind and brave. May I see clearly and open to your great blessings. May I be humble whenever possible and may I trust and remember, I feel you tapping on my shoulder, reminding me, or kissing me gently on my eyelids, how I love you forever more and more and more. And then there is the Jewish God I grew up with, which is partly why I forgot how to pray. Dear Jewish God, although you are a stranger to me and you are so busy smiting and causing disruption, and I am afraid of you, I still love you in my soul and believe there is something better and deeper going on in you. I know I question you a lot and often, and I'm filled with doubt. Still, I see the glory at times, a hint of the fierce bright light that you are in truth. And I surrender before you and I tremble 
yes, I do. Please be kind and understand that I am trying. I am doing the best that I can. Meanwhile, most of the time, I just simply forget how to pray. I forget what it even is. There was no Passover for me this year. Too much COVID fatigue and life fatigue. Gray, dark, muddy days. I didn't mind. I stayed inside. Hail was coming down. All the plagues. I was looking for rainbows. I ran to the window. I ran outside. I looked up at the sky. What strange times we live in. Maybe it's been that way forever. People running scared to stay or to go. War and wildfires. Is there any escape? Of course there is. Of course there's not. What is my prayer for this world? It's more like a plea these days, a desperate plea. May we all, may there be, may, may it be, will it be okay? Can, can it be, can it ever, please, please? This is my prayer. It's pretty pathetic. It's more like a dirge, a hopeless prayer, prayer filled with a moaning and wailing and some gratitude thrown in. Yes, there is gratitude. There are many blessings, and I know that. Shema Israel. I don't even remember. No Passover table, no Passover plate, only bitter herbs, only the matzah for me. This is my prayer. Swing low, sweet chariot. I pray for all others. I pray for us all. I pray to have peace. I pray for those running scared and for those who stayed home and for those left behind and for those in the streets and for those at the station and for those who are hungry and for those who are children and for those without a voice and for those losing their rights and their democracies. Yes, for us, for us all and for what is to come next. Stormy weather is my prayer. It's raining all the time. I have to learn how to pray again. I have to remember, I knew it once. Is this a prayer? Is this a prayer anyway? Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you. And now I turn it over to Lini. Amazing Lini Sack. Take it. Hi, Lini. Hello. Hello. I see that um, Ziggy has joined us. Ziggy is new in the household. We are a mutual rescue team. <laughs> and um, okay. So would somebody volunteer to be the timer? I can. That's Robin. And Robin can. So if you would just turn on your timer for 10 minutes, and at 10 minutes, maybe I'll already be finished and Maybe I won't, and then I will um, either stop abruptly or blow through the timer. I don't know. Yeah. I have, can you hear this sound? A little jingle. It's my, it's a cat toy that I use to tell people that their time is up. Yeah. If I don't hear it, or I, uh, you could yeah. just say cat toy. Yeah, cat toy. <laughs> jingle, jingle. But thank uh, you. Okay, so we start with being um, having audience participation. I don't know if you're exactly audience, <laughs> Robin. Um, this is what I want to start with. I want to start with the word, which is maybe surprisingly to some of you um, from the Aramaic. And the word is abracadabra. Abracadabra. And the meaning of that word is I create or I will create as I speak. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. So earlier I was doing a very, very minimal uh, vocal clearing, and I heard myself go. Me, mm, 
And that took me into you, 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 which took me into we, we, we. Me, 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 I didn't march today. I couldn't march. So I set up and welcome to my studio. And I, I write um, in objects also, I like to write in objects. And so some of the objects are on, usually it's the word wall and they have to do with colors and what we've been wearing these last years. Pussy pink hat, the colors of Ukraine. They called the bands off my body. The green wave started in Argentina is green. So writing in writing in objects. Maybe a senator? So since COVID, I've been performing um, in different ways. I've been performing what I call the page stage. So the page stage is writing. Sometimes it's large writing on a large paper on the floor. And I've been performing, reading my work as I've been writing to friends on the phone. And that's the thing that I'd like to try to do. I'm going to try to change to my phone and see if I can um, create with you the intimacy of that. And if not, I'll be right back and we'll do this again, okay? Hold on. Don't let me do it. Let's see what I can do this way. Let's see what I can do this way. Okay, here we go. Oops. In my little and vast mind, 
the pamphlets of Sophie Scholl have transmogrified into winged leaflets, flyers, and she or I appear at the top of the spiraling Guggenheim Museum, originally conceived as temple of the spirit. A light in the horizontal flock alongside very few like-spirited sisters and a smattering of brothers. Releasing the snowstorm of parachuting paper printed with verboten words. Are they exhortations, perhaps invocations, koans, haiku? At least 1,000 yet unfolded paper cranes, scores, maps, invitations, ideas, or paper fortune cookies printed in edible ink on edible paper intended for ingestion, digestion, rumination, nourishment, transmorphic politically desired alchemy, embodied dream. In my little and vast, fearful and prescient mind, we are arrested then as history becomes dream and sentenced to death. Paperless now on a fine and sunny day, she imprints her final words in sounded air. She has to go. In my body, Alembic, her severed head boils with rose petals and pamphlets, a few pages from the diaries of Eddie Hillison, a sexy paragraph by Anais Nin, a word, an image gouache, compliments of Charlotte Salomon and a lock of graying hair from me. In my vast and troubled and awakening mind, temple of spirit, my head falls from the top of the spiral as an offering, a truth, propagandic relic of fantasized action splat on the floor of some elitist museum, smack into the degenerative art temporary exhibit. This piece is part of uh, a number of works that are called uh, Poems with Footnotes, but I haven't written the footnotes. So. Um, Sophie Scholl was an activist in Nazi Germany, um, a university student, and yes, they printed along with her brother and a smattering of uh, like-minded other young people. They, um, they printed and distributed anti-Nazi propaganda, and they were arrested, and they were executed. She was beheaded. And her last words, so here's part of the footnote notes. Uh, there are a few versions. Quote, such a fine sunny day, and I have to go. What does my death matter if through us, thousands of people are awakened and stirred to action. Eddie Hillison was a young Jewish woman in Amsterdam. Her diaries were published as an interrupted life. One 
uh, thing that's said is that when they left uh, Vesterborg, where the Jews were being held, taken before being taken to the death camps, um, someone said a postcard was released that said, or a piece of paper, we left the camp singing. So all of this is awakened or reawakened in my own um, body, in my own memory body and spirit body as a, a daughter of concentration camp survivors is reawakened now as very familiar, similar No words. So I'll read you something else. I'll read you this now. Sophie Shaw, thank you. Bless you. So you get the idea of what I was trying to do that I couldn't do. I was trying to like frame my whole head right here. So I'm just talking to you very intimately, very quietly, very intimately. But I have to stand and bend, which I cannot sustain. And so in this manner, I continue. There is a book my dear friend told me, but don't read it alone. We can read it together. And don't start from the beginning, begin at the end. What book is this? I asked, and he whispered the title. Chronic shame. What joy I felt, I shouted back, chronic shame. Yes, yes, begin now at the end, let's go. It is said that 40 days before birth, that's your birth and mine too, the angel Gabriel comes and having imparted all mystical knowledge to you and to me too, all, ever, he swacks each of us between the nose and the upper lip. And that is this hollow we have there between nose and mouth, all of us, and so we forget, then we are born and must relearn all. Laurie Anderson speaks of this too. In her telling, it is a female angel and she, the angel places and presses her finger in that place, above my lip and your lip too, like a shh. And all is forgotten, lost, and must be found again. William Kentridge speaks of the asin, asin, asen, in African art a monument to a dead person, an iron disc on a pole with things upon it, objects, words, figures, name related energy things through which the spirit of the dead person is invoked and honored. In his animated film, the bird stops the metronome in black and white, the bird stops metronome. And I am changed and a crumb of the forgotten returns. In my animation, a dear friend is reading a book to me. His reading hugs me, I am embraced and bundle up that chronic shame and place it on an asin, asen, Asin.
Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here together. Me, we, you, we, me, you, we, we, me, me, you, we. Raven wings. Ah. His spirit body close against my side. His spirit head warm and heavy and light upon my heart. I ask him for help. Later in the dark, dark of night, he sends it. Oh, dark, dark, dark. They all go into the dark, T.S. Eliot wrote. I had thought it was Dylan Thomas, but no, he wrote, do not go gentle into that good night. Why not? Oh, boys. Oh, you big boys, gentle up, lighten up, light up the dark you have dropped heavy upon us. Find your crack and finger it open. That's how the light gets in. Warner's nomenclature of colors was used by Darwin, all the colors of everything, animal, mineral, Vegetable. Pantone used it too. Cat toy. What is the color of light? Pray tell. I asked him for help and he sent me Warner's nomenclature of colors. He sent me color of everything right here in the black, black, blackness of the raven's wings. Thank you. Thank you, Lini. I completely failed in my job to notice the time. Make sure you all look into the chat to see everybody's nice comments and 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 such. And if while while um, we're going to turn the mic over to Saviana, if anyone can think of any questions that they'd like to ask to the three writers tonight, you could just put that in the chat. And right now we're going to turn the mic over. Here is Saviana. Hi. 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 Thank you, everyone. Yeah, it is such a pleasure and honor to be here with um, the other two wonderful um, writers and with the writers in the audience and everybody else. Um, I will read only one poem. It's a longer poem. Uh, it was performed in New York in a show at the Ontological Theater with a dancer with choreography, uh, music, and video. Um, it is uh, based on uh, discussions with women refugees. And um, of course, I will dedicate this poem now to the people of Ukraine. Thank you all. It's from the book, uh, Google Me, my book. <laughs> but I'm going to read it from the screen. Thank you. Suspendida. I don't know where I come from. I don't remember. I don't want to remember. I remember my name, Roana, 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 that must mean something. But what if it means nothing or something that I forgot to pack in my suitcase? Suitcase, valiza, valiza, maleta. I can't find the right word. I didn't pack all my words, suitcase. It sounds nice and sweet, but it's not. It's heavy. It has my clothes and my memories in it. Not very well packed. I'm not sure which is which. Is that a dress or a memory? Alarm, bombs, fire, screams. Alarm, bombs, fire, screams, blood. Ah! I don't like red. Red 
scares me. I like blue, yellow, the sky, the ocean, the curtains in my room, before the war, before everything, before. Do you wanna know a secret? I can predict the future, but no one ever believes me. <laughs> oh, you believe me. You don't. <laughs> you want to believe me. You don't. Yeah, it was a war in my country. How can you tell? I know. My wrinkles, I packed them too. I am a tree. You can tell how many corpses I've seen by counting my wrinkles. People are plants. They need light, good light, sunlight. Corpses. Mom taught me how to wash corpses. Mom, that man is gonna be dead very soon. I need to touch his face now when it's still warm. I was a good student in washing corpses. Parts of their bodies still missing, gone on duty, suspended in the nothingness, lost, vanished, forgotten, immigrated to another country of war trophies and hit targets, the country of martyrs and heroes, who's who, nobody can tell. I was 14 when I saw a man naked for the first time, his penis erect, looking strange on his dead body. A man like an old temple where girls were supposed to lose their virginity with the statue of a God, a man like a God a dead god. I don't want to talk about gods. Let's talk about faces. My first corpse to wash had no face. No problem. I drew him one. I was still very optimistic and generous for that age and that country. Here's the thing. Faces get erased in a war. People are not people anymore. In a war, people become numbers robots, cartoons, video games. Boom, bazoom, done, exit. Start a new game? Yes, click, 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 play. Washing corpses was like playing with dolls. New dolls every day. What a gift, what a horror. I want to emigrate to America, I tell mom one day. That's nonsense, she says. America is too far, too different, too foreign, too big, too strong, too rich, too another world. Exactly. I want out of this world, I say. I don't want to die. I don't want to be a corpse and have someone else draw me a face. I won't let you draw me a face. You have no talent. Yeah, da, si, yeah. I was too bold, too dreamy, too impudent for that age and that country. And here I am, here I am suspended in a new net of new words, new words. I am an immigrant fish in the sandland of landlords and land shores. I want to remember and I want to forget everything. I'm learning to talk to my new body Hand, heria, mana, mano, hand, English, 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 fingers, dactyla, degete, dedos, fingers, English, 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 toes, dactyla, degete de la picioare, dedos de los pies, toes, English, 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 tongue, glossa, limba, lengua, tongue. Hair, Malia, Per, Pelo, hair, English. Eyes, Matia, Oki, Ojos, eyes, English. Mother, Mitera, Mama, Madre, Mother, English. Childhood, Pedicilicia, Copilerie, Nines, Childhood, English. Suitcase, Valiza, Valiza, Maleta, Suitcase, English. Travel, Taxido, Colatorie, Viaje. Travel, English, in between, anamesa, entre, en medio, in between, English, suspended, eurume, suspendata, suspendida, 
English. Suspended in the new net of an old spider without a face. I can't draw faces anymore. I can't see the sky. The buildings are so tall. They scrape the sky every day. Blue, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. Blue, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. Blue, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. My tiny room has tiny windows. I can see the walls, the garbage, the rats. Suspendida, my new name, is the beginning of a new old story. I don't like blue anymore. I love only the colors of the skin, the colors that breathe, live, exist in this world, the fourth world where everything has the name, the same name, my name, Suspendida. Thank you all. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. And now we'll have a short to talk back. Uh, and we hope to hear from all of you. Uh, please, um, yeah, put your questions in the chat or I hope you, you will also ask us directly. Thank you. So I have some questions for you. I've got you all three on the screen now. Oh, where did Bond go? Oh, I don't know. Come back. Where am I? There you are. Okay. So here's a question. Um, how is writing for performance different than other writing? I guess what's different when you know you're going to be reading it out loud? Well, I think that um, because I started as a poet and then I wrote a dramatic poem, uh, The Outcast back in Romania. And then I started to become a playwright. They, the people, the audience and the theater people started to call me a playwright. I was still considering myself a poet, mm -hmm. but they staged uh, my dramatic poem in Paris, the Théâtre Gérard Philippe de Saint-Denis. So I realized, look, you know, poetry and theater, they are not so different as we think. So I think I maintained my poetic style in writing for theater, writing plays, and I maintain a sort of dramatic style in writing my poems. So a performative um, uh, poem, I would say, it is one that um, it's more theatrical somehow. Uh, it's sort of talking direct to the audience is maybe less contemplative, less reflective in the sense that you know the poet who stays um, in their space and writes their reflections. So it's a little more out there for me. It's more like, okay, I'm gonna tell something to the world. Mm -hmm. it, it, it asks to be spoken as well as written. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, yeah, I agree with that. And for me, it's also feels like a whole body experience, like writing with the sort of feeling of, you know, putting it, out, putting it out and, you know, including the air around me as well as what's inside. Yeah, something about the expressive part of it kind of comes to the surface more. I hear, speak, sing it when I'm writing, except, for, you know, maybe I'm filling out a form. Uh, that, mm -hmm. try that. Um, my feeling about a lot of my writing is that um, I'm not satisfied with it on the page, that it, and I haven't uh, yet found how to um, how to write it in a way that mirrors uh, some of the values of sound that um, that I work with. So. So there. Mm -hmm. One question was, how did you choose what to read tonight? I mean, how do you choose of everything that you've written? That what? was my question, actually. What? <laughs> that was my question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really hard for me to choose. And I know that what I'm used to because after writing some solo performance pieces is that I like to be funny 
at times, but I also like to be deep. So I'm trying to find a, some kind of balance between funny and deep. So mm. I don't know what always works or what doesn't work, but that's sort of in my mind, you know, so kind of maybe start off a little lighter and then go, boom, <laughs> if I can. Yeah. I have several other pieces that I intended to read that I had timed and that were all uh, in some way related to war. Um, but I also then realized because one thing keeps upstaging the other, but everything is forefront or shuffling this way. And so Ukraine, 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 and then the Supreme Court and Roe. And uh, yeah, so I thought among other things, well, when I timed these things, I read them fairly quickly. And one of the main ingredients mm -hmm. of, uh, of readings is time mm -hmm. and allowing it to um, take the time it takes. And so I realized I was gonna be a lot slower and that the writing also for me wanted to be writing in air or writing in space or talking to you or uh, being informal, looking at my idea of, oh, what's a reading? Oh, do I need to frame myself like this and read the stuff? It's like, well, why? What is possible? So those three pieces emerged for, I keep talking about it, but I won't. Um, I think it's worth remembering that poetry started out in oral and the, the first poets, <laughs> over a long period of time were performers. Mm -hmm. They were storytellers, uh, it may be refined storytelling, and I think that at least the way it has entered my world is that I don't know how good a poem is until I read it to myself. And reading it is how you edit because you hear that you have a line that is stumbling, mm -hmm. a line that stops you, um, words that are too clunky. Uh, and it doesn't come from looking at it, it comes from mm -hmm. speaking it. Mm -hmm. So true. From speaking it, yes, to oneself out loud, but speaking well, it. But I, I perform, <laughs> I'm a performer, so. Uh, Performing for myself is not different than performing for a group, an audience. I like that last sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because when I do grant writing workshops, I tell people that they need to read what they've written out loud. Uh huh. Very important. Same thing. They can't. They can't. Right. Hear it. Well, that doesn't sound right. They can't feel it when they're just reading the words on the page. They have to read it out loud. And that's not, that's not poetry fiction. Hopefully it's not fiction <laughs> or creative nonfiction. It's a grant request, but reading things out loud is really crucial. Um, one other question, which was, um, what is your process? Do you need to be quiet? Do you need to have a cup of tea? Do you start with a sketch? Do you just brainstorm? Do you, you know, do you plan things out in your brain before you put pen to paper? Hmm. Well, I know that for me, I, I'm in two different writing groups that both meet weekly and they were, we've met for years, both groups, and they're very different from each other. And we use prompts Mm, sure. It's, it's an environment that is so inspiring and uh, appreciative and allows for us to grow and experiment and try things and to really feel like there's space to write. And then there's this back and forth with each other. So Would I you think get any writing done if you weren't in the group? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> it's been years. Um, well, I do write at other times, but it, yeah, it's a different, it's a different quality. 
Yeah. Yeah. Different. Yeah. So I, for me, I wait for some kind of inspiration that could be anything. I for me, to... for both the poetry and the theater, for my plays, I carry with me an idea, an image, a concept for a long time. And for the play or the poem first takes a shape in my mind. And when I'm ready, at some point, I just put it on the page or screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Lini? I think also that, that uh, at least for some poets, the poet, the poem tends to push you where you didn't know you were going. Uh, you start, I start with the first two lines and then I have no idea where they're going, but that the flow from the first two lines is what creates the whole rest of the poem. And it yeah. may not even be the idea that flashed into my mind. Uh, ideas don't do it. It's the lyricism. For me, it's the lyricism of the first beginning that tells me, doesn't tell me, it takes me <laughs> where, I'm, where I'm going. So we do have a question. Um, I wonder if the writers could comment on how their creative work and process intersects with their work to strive for, imagine, create justice in this unjust world in which we live, and how do they understand creativity as an action towards justice? That sounds like a good topic for a reading next year, maybe, you know? It's a big question. It's huge. I guess, do you think about, I mean, I know you do because I just listened to you. Mm -hmm. When you're creating art, um, are you thinking about just, and as thinking as it as an action toward justice? I mean, I know you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I consider myself an activist. This is what I Artifice. say I am. Yeah. So I right. definitely do activist activism through art, through my art. I really, I really believe that um, we can make a difference as artists, as writers. And um, I'm I'm quite intentional in the projects that I take. Mm -hmm. Is artivist a word? Because I like it. It's created. <laughs> it's <laughs> artivist. It's <laughs> The poets create words. <laughs> yeah, it's a good word. Yeah, it's always it's always in the back of my mind or the front of my mind because you know I feel like we're not separate from what's happening around us, and it just feels so important to merge the personal and the political and or what whatever that means, the social justice, whatever it is to to really bring it together in some way that feels somehow i don't know tra transforming or or shouting or screaming or yeah or wailing yeah well, we, you, you always put in a little bit of comedy in there too yeah yeah i, I interrupted so. someone go ahead Was that it would be like <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I, I heard I did talk over somebody just then. Uh, it was me, and I was I was saying that we are separate. Um, it, it's it's proving our feelings that we are separate uh, to say or to or to think that we are part of the whole messy world uh, yes we are but we are we're the privileged and we should we should realize it part of it is being in america of course uh part of it is being the intellectual elite <laughs> which you know is what how we have been labeled and when somebody tries to doubt my commitment to ordinary life because I am an intellectual elite, what I have to say back is that 
art and music and poetry are the, the are my lifeblood. They're not separate. Yeah. And if I can put them to use in any way, of course, towards the, the terrible conditions, I would do that and will do that or have done that. But um, in general, I think we have to count for the moment how lucky we are. I'm going to uh, say that we can, uh, if anyone wants to continue to hang out, that's fine. We can consider this now the after party. Um, but I just wanted to thank everyone for coming to this event tonight. And I just stopped the recording.